in this short lecture, we will review sampling and sampling error, which is covered in Chapter 10 of Clear Sighted Statistics. Pew Research has a very clear definition of sampling error. Sampling error results from collecting data from some rather than all members of a population and is highly dependent on the size of the sample. In this lecture, we will conduct a sampling distribution of the sample means. We will describe the implications of the central limit theorem. And we will use z-values to find the probabilities of obtaining possible sample means, x-bar, from a normally distributed population. To do so, the formula for z will be modified. What is sampling error? Sampling error occurs when the statistic does not equal the population parameter when x bar doesn't equal mu, when p does not equal pi, when s squared doesn't equal sigma squared. Let's review the sampling distribution of the sample means. We shall see that sampling error is widespread and it is not the result of human mistakes. In an alternate universe, five dead American presidents formed a basketball team. The table shows the average points per game for Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, and Monroe. The population mean is 18 points per game. How many samples of two players are possible from the five players? We can use the combinations formula to figure out the number of samples. As shown in the formula, there are 10 possible samples. The combination formula is used instead of the permutations formula because the order of selection does not matter. Here are the 10 properly drawn samples along with the sample means. Remember the population mean was a score of 18. Nine of the 10 samples, 90% have sampling error. Only one sample, Jefferson Monroe, has a sample mean that equals the population mean. The mean of the sample means, mu sub x bar equals 18, which is the same as the population mean. Variability, as measured by the range, is greater in the population than in the sampling distribution, 28 versus 18. The sampling distribution of sample means has less variability because the sample means draw the data towards the center. Let's turn to the central limit theorem, which is a central concept for the discipline of statistics. The central limit theorem was first proven in 1810 by Pierre Simon Laplace. The proof was revised in 1824 by Simeon Denis Poisson. There are four key implications of the central limit theorem. One, sampling distributions of the sample mean become more normally distributed as the sample size increases. Two, when the population is normally distributed, the sampling distribution of the sample means will follow a normal distribution. When the population is skewed, the normal shape of the sampling distribution will emerge with a sample size as small as 10. 4. When the population is heavily skewed, the normal shape of the sampling distribution will emerge with a sample as small as 30. These charts illustrate the implications of the central limit theorem. Based on the central limit theorem, Samples of 30 or more are large enough to assume the sampling distribution follows a normal distribution even when the population does not. Let's turn to calculating z-values for samples. You will recall that z-values for a population are found by the random value x minus the population mean mu over the population standard deviation sigma. For a sample, Z is the sample mean x bar minus the population mean mu. This is sampling error over the standard error of the mean found by the population standard deviation sigma over the square root of n, where n is the number of observations in the sample. To repeat, x bar minus mu is sampling error, and the population standard deviation sigma over the square root of n is the standard error of the mean. As we shall see in future lectures, most null hypothesis significance test formulas follow this structure. Sampling error is in the numerator, 
and the standard error is in the denominator. The more variable the data, the larger the population standard deviation, the larger the standard error the mean. The larger the sample size, or n, the smaller the standard error the mean. Let's turn to finding the area under the curve. A factory produces widgets. The population mean, mu, is 300 widgets an hour. The population standard deviation, sigma, is 20. Based on a random sample of 36 hours, the sample mean is 305.5. What is the area under the curve? The z value equals 1.65. The sample mean of 305.5 widgets produced represents 45.05% of the curve above the population mean. 4.95% of the curve is in the right tail, which is the area in red. Based on a random sample of 36 hours, the sample mean is 295. What is the area under the curve? The z value equals negative 1.50. The sample mean of 295 widgets produced represents 43.32% of the curve below the population mean. 6.68% of the curve is in the left tail, which is the area in red. What is the area between z values of 1.65 and negative 50? We can solve this problem using the special rule of addition. 0 0.4505 plus 0 0.4332 equals 0 0.8837 or 88.37%. What is the area between a z of 1.65 and 2.25? We need to remove the joint probability of the area between a z values of 0 and 1.65. The answer is 0 0.0373 or 3.73% found by 0 0.4838 minus 0 0.4505. Except where otherwise noted, clear-sighted statistics is licensed under a Creative Commons license. You are free to share derivatives of this work for non-commercial purposes only. Please attribute this work to Edward Volchak. You can access clear-sighted statistics for free along with its Excel and PowerPoint files on the CUNY Commons. The URL is https forward slash forward slash cuny dot manifold app dot org forward slash projects forward slash clear dash cited dash statistics.